Whiting developed the first practical roll-up door for trucks and trucks. Fully integrated manufacturer, Whiting's strength lies in producing doors of consistent high quality, thanks to Whiting's hands-on family management and wide-ranging manufacturing abilities. Several generations of dedication have kept Whiting the sales and quality leader of the door industry. Product quality and reliability are designed into every Whiting door and component right from the earliest stages of development. Years of experience have combined to determine the strength and durability required in today's operating environment. A fully computerized engineering department is integrated with research and development to design products that will withstand the test of time and serve our customers' needs. This presentation will help you to install and maintain a standard whiting three-quarter inch general purpose dry freight door. This whiting roll-up door features a standard single spring, two cable balancer, one inch rollers, and surface mounted cam lock. Correct customer installation and maintenance are important components of proper long-term operation. The following video will help you install and maintain a whiting door to ensure superior performance for many years. For proper installation of a whiting general purpose door, follow the steps as shown. Let's cover them one at a time. Be sure your truck or trailer is prepared to accept a roll-up door. Generally, the minimum header height required is 7 inches. If you have less than 7 inches, build the header down with a channel or other formed sheet metal. The minimum post width is 2 and 1 half inches. Again, if needed, build the posts out to at least this minimum. Next, you need to order the proper size door for the truck or trailer. This is easy to do as long as you obtain four basic dimensions. The first dimension is called the post to post or opening width. This is the clear opening between the door posts. Second, measure the sill to header dimension. This is the vertical distance between the underside or bottom of the header and sill, or surface on which the door will be resting when closed. Next, measure the depth of the header. This is simply the dimension from the underside or bottom of the header up to the roof skin or lining. The fourth and final dimension is the depth of the unit's roof bows. These are the channel-shaped pieces that span the body from side to side, holding up the roof skin. Measure from the bow's underside to the roof skin. Typically, the depth can range from three-quarters of an inch up to two inches deep. Once you have these four dimensions, report them to your whiting dealer when ordering the door. Measure carefully and make sure you don't omit any of the dimensions. Proper preparation of the rear door frame, along with complete and accurate measurements, will put you a long way toward a smooth installation. Before starting, secure the following equipment. Two step ladders, a welder, a jigsaw or cutting torch, a light, several pairs of vice grips, a tape measure, two 3 8 by 12 inch winding bars, one 7 16 inch and one 1 half inch wrench, two two by four blocks, a screwdriver, a power drill with a one quarter inch bit, a square, a scribing tool. It's important to understand each step in the installation procedure before attempting to assemble your door. The component parts should be checked to make sure you have all the necessary items and are familiar with them. For complete installation, you should have a bundle containing the door, which is divided into two halves. The balancer spring assembly, complete with shaft, cable drums, and spring anchor bracket. A set of vertical tracks with balancer mounting brackets and bearings attached. A set of horizontal tracks. A set of side seals, if ordered and a hardware box containing miscellaneous hardware and rollers. The first procedure to follow is track installation. Beginning with the vertical track assemblies, secure the vertical track so that they are even with the edge of the door opening, square against the post, and parallel to each other. 
In addition, the vertical tracks must be equally spaced. Check this dimension near the top, bottom, and center of the opening to be sure the spacing is equal throughout. Shim slightly if necessary. Check for parallel positioning by measuring the assemblies diagonally and shim to allow no more than one-eighth inch difference at any point. Do not force the track. Once the tracks are positioned properly, weld into place. The horizontal tracks can now be installed. Using the tongue and groove notch provided, or connector clip, align the horizontal tracks with the vertical. The horizontal section should be 90 degrees from the vertical. In other words, they should be parallel with the top roof rail. To hold the horizontal tracks in position, you may need to fabricate brackets or clips to fasten to the sidewall, top rail, or roof bows. The horizontal tracks can be easily attached to the unit using rivets or bolts. A minimum of four attachments per side should be sufficient. If you know the offset required for the clips, specify this measurement at the time you place your order so the clips can be provided by whiting. Again, check the dimension between the tracks in several different locations and be sure the dimension between the vertical tracks consistently equals the dimension between the horizontal tracks. With this completed, the door tracks are now properly installed and fastened securely. The next step is the installation of the balancer. In most cases, the roadside and curbside balancer brackets are shipped pre-attached to the mounting angles. The brackets have bearings bolted to them. Position the spring anchor or center bracket six and one half inches from the roadside bracket. Be certain that the spring anchor bracket is square to the header and in line with the roadside and curbside brackets. Shim if necessary. Each bracket must be securely attached to the header as they will be supporting a charged torsion spring assembly. To install the balancer, loosen the roadside cable drum and insert the roadside end of the shaft into its bearing. Raise the balancer and insert the curbside end of the shaft until the cable drum is firmly against the bearing. Slide the roadside drum against its bearing and tighten. Check to be sure that an equal amount of the shaft extends through each bearing. If not, Loosen the cable drums and adjust them. Finally, bolt the spring anchor casting to the center bracket. The balancer brackets and spring assembly are now installed, and you're ready for the next step, installation of the whiting door. Install the door cables to the door by placing the eye end of the cable through the cable anchor bracket. The cut end of the cable should be adjacent to the face of the door. Secure the cables using the clevis and cotter pins. Place a vice grip clamp firmly in the horizontal track just before the radius about 16 inches from the header. Carry the lower half of the door into the unit face up with the brake joint facing toward the front. Tip the door slightly to pass through the rear door frame. Once inside, lower one edge so that it rests against the corner where the sidewall joins the floor. Install the rollers into each hinge location, including the bottom bracket. Be sure to place three spacer washers on the roller shafts at the bottom joint locations. These washers play an important role in keeping the door centered and operating smoothly. 
Once the first edge of the door is prepared, lift the opposite side of the door, placing the just installed rollers against the sidewall to keep them from falling out. Now finish installing the rollers on the other side of the door. Move the door section to the front of the trailer by sliding along the floor on the rollers to keep the rollers in place. Lift the lower door half into position and slide it into the back of the horizontal tracks. Roll the lower half in until it stops against the vice grips. Place another clamp behind the door half to hold it in place while you carry the upper half into the unit. Again, after installing the rollers, slide the upper half of the door into the tracks. Install the rubber track stops at the rear of each horizontal track section. Next, replace two blocks on the rear sill for the door to rest on temporarily. Remove the vice grip clamps near the header and lower the bottom section of the door onto the blocks. Lower the section carefully, keeping your hands and fingers away from the panel joints. Remove the remaining vice grip clamp and lower the top section of the door onto the lower section. Take care to align the tongue and groove panel joints as the door halves come together. Again, be careful to avoid any potential pinch points. Fasten the halves together, utilizing the step bolts provided. Be careful not to over-tighten the nut, as over-tightening may force the bolt head into the wood. Loosen the two set screws on the cable drum. Then feed one cable between the header and cable drum and insert the cable into the slot of the drum and rotate the cable drum until the cable is tight. Make sure the cable follows the grooves and does not skip grooves or wind over itself. Slide the cable drum against the bearing and tighten both set screws. It's important to note that the cable drums keep the balancer from side shifting so they must be placed against the bearing. In order to keep tension on the cable, place a vice grip on the balancer shaft with a handle resting against the roof sheet. Now, repeat this procedure with the cable on the other side. Using a piece of chalk, mark a line the entire length of the spring. As the spring is wound, this mark will turn into a spiral. The number of stripes you see will tell you automatically how many turns have been wound onto the spring. A simple formula is used to determine the number of winds to put on the balancer. Take the height of the door, divide by 10, and add 3. In the case of a 90-inch door, for example, 90 divided by 10 equals 9, plus 3 equals 12 turns. Loosen both spring winding cone set screws, insert a winding bar, and push up. Continue rotating the winding cone until the desired turns are completed. Count the stripes as a double check. Next, tighten both set screws on the winding cone and remove the vice grip clamp. 
Now, test the door. A properly balanced door should move with very little effort. It shouldn't fly up or drop down fast. If necessary, the spring can be adjusted slightly by adding or removing tension so the door will raise and lower properly. The latch plate is responsible for holding your roll-up door closed. The position of the latch plate is therefore critical for proper lock operation. In order to properly position the latch plate, first raise the door slightly and measure the center line point between the posts and scribe a mark on the sill. This will be the center line of the cutout. Using the cam as a guide, mark the sill where the center of the cam intersects the scribe mark. Use the latch plate as a template for the cutout. Remove that portion of the sill and replace it with a latch plate. Weld the plate flush with the sill and grind smooth. Allow the sill to cool and try the lock to be sure the lock engages properly. The cam should contact the depressed section of the latch plate and the handle should engage the keeper with a minimal amount of force. Next, while the blocks remain on the sill, insert rollers into the top roller bracket and then into the horizontal tracks. Install the adjustment bolts finger tight. Move the brackets into position so that the panel is in line with the panels below it and tighten the bolts. When properly adjusted, the top seal will contact the header across the entire width of the header. The top seal may be notched for cables at this time if desired. Side seals are a popular option. To install them, insert the rectangular portion of the seal into the edge of the mounting angle starting at the bottom. Using a screwdriver, snap the pointed edge under the tab and secure with either a pop rivet, sheet metal screw, or a drive rivet. Once the bottom is secure, Move to the top of the mounting angle and repeat this procedure. Be sure you stretch the seal enough to remove any kinks or waves. Trim the seal to length and snap it into the mounting angle the rest of the way. As a final inspection, please check the following. Lock operation. Does it engage and disengage easily without forcing? Balancer adjustment. Does the door open and close easily and smoothly? It should not fly up, nor creep, or rush down. Top panel adjustment. From the outside of the unit, look at the header and post. Are there any gaps, or is the top panel leaning back excessively? Is the door centered in the opening? Check the end hinge rivets. Are they about the same spacing from the post? This is necessary for proper side seal, lock, and door operation. Does the door operate freely? A door that is too tight, meaning that it is too wide for the installation, will cause problems. The rollers should roll freely in the tracks and the door should move up and down smoothly and easily with approximately three-eighths of an inch of side shift. Finally, observe the cosmetic condition of the door installation. This is very important, as your door will be seen by hundreds of thousands of people. Touch up any damaged areas and remove grease or other smudges which detract from a professional job. 
A clean, neat appearing door makes a statement about your company and its product. By following these guidelines, you should have years of trouble-free, smooth operation. And to ensure the continuing fine performance of your whiting roll-up door, we now present a step-by-step -step overview of recommended maintenance procedures. The whiting general purpose door is a basic design to fill the rear opening of a truck or trailer with an upward acting closure. In order to maximize and extend the smooth operation of a general purpose door, let's cover the common maintenance procedures you may encounter. First, it's a good idea to inspect the door assembly prior to operating the unit. From the outside, check for damaged panels and worn or frayed cables or pole straps. Any evidence of cable or strap problems should be corrected immediately prior to operating the door. Check to see if the lock and keeper pivot freely and be sure that the lock cam fits snugly against the latch plate in the sill. Also, check the top, bottom, and side seals to see that they're in position and in good condition. Moving to the inside of the unit, be sure all rollers and hinges are in place and fastened securely. Check the bottom and top fixtures, making sure that the top adjustment slide is in position and fastened tight. The track should be straight and free from damage, with the rubber track stops fastened in place. Check the amount of side shift movement in the door. There should be no more than 3 8 inch total. You can adjust this movement by adding or removing spacer washers located on the rollers at the first panel joint from the top and bottom. These washers serve to center the door within the door opening and play an important role in smooth door operation. Finally, check the balancer assembly. The cables should follow the grooves of the cable drum. There should be no spaces or gaps between the cable wraps. Be sure the cable is not crossed over on itself, which can cause wear and failure. Check to see that each cable drum is firmly against its bearing assembly and that the cable is not rubbing against anything. When your inspection is complete, the door should roll up and down easily and smoothly. Because your door may sustain damage through abuse or accident, let's go over the common repair procedures for the general purpose door. Roller change. To change your roller on the general purpose door, drill the rivets out of the roller hinge, replace the roller, and refasten the hinge with either rivets or knurled step bolts. Another method would be to release balancer tension and roll the door out of the horizontal tracks until the damaged roller can be accessed. When the roller has been replaced, reapply tension to the balancer. Cable change. Any cable that is frayed or broken should be replaced immediately. If one cable needs to be replaced, consider replacing both, as the extra labor necessary is quite small. To replace a cable, follow these directions. Note, on a general purpose single spring balancer, if one cable is broken, the spring does not lose its tension. Do not loosen the winding cone set screws. Insert a winding bar into the winding cone and lift slightly until the second bar can be inserted. At this point, the cables are free of any tension as the winding bar is taking the full spring load. Rest the bar against the door and proceed to the cable drum area. Remove the old cable, lower the new cable between the door and header. Attach the cable eye to the cable anchor bracket with a clevis and cotter pin. Loosen both set screws on the cable drum and wind the cable onto the drum following the grooves. Use care not to skip winds or cross over the cable. 
Make sure the cable is wound tight and the drum is against the bearing, then tighten both set screws. Move to the opposite side drum and loosen its set screws. Rotate the drum so that this cable is equally tight. Check that the drum is against its bearing and tighten the set screws. Insert a winding bar into the cone and lift. Allow the bar to rotate down until the tension is placed onto the cables and remove the bar. Panel change. If a door panel other than the bottom panel is in need of replacement, follow these steps. With the door slightly off the floor, place vice grip clamps just above the bottom rollers on each side. Also, place vice grip clamps just under the top rollers on each side. These clamps will prevent the lower half of the door from rising and the upper half of the door from falling when the damaged panel is removed. Drill out the hinge rivets passing through the damaged panel. Lift the upper half of the door slightly and remove the damaged panel. Next, insert the new panel. Using the existing hinges as templates, drill for the fasteners. Tip the new panel inward and install the fasteners. Secure the hinges and remove the clamps. The best way to order parts for your door is to refer to the door serial number Lubrication. You can extend the life and improve the operation of your door by keeping it lubricated. Using a light lubricant such as Whiting Easy Up or a dry lubricant, apply to the following parts. Hinges. Rollers. Bottom fixture. Lock. balancer spring. Do not lubricate the seals and never use grease, particularly in the door tracks. In the event that you have any questions or suggestions, or for complete information about the full line of whiting doors, please call us at 716-542-5427. And once again, thank you from Whiting Doors, quality and made in the USA.